Just want to let you guys know that I had some pretty serious issues regarding face tracking and audio quality, so thank you so much for your patience as I work these out. I know that the production quality on this video is subpar, but thank you so much for your patience regardless, and I still hope I can help some people with this video. Hi, it's been a while since I've made any sort of tutorial or video, so forgive me for being rusty, but today I'm going to go over matte caps. What are they, how to use them, and why they could be important for optimizing your avatars and making them look great inside of VRChat. So first I'm going to go over what matte caps or material captures are, and then I'm going to walk you through how to use them inside of various shaders inside of Unity. So in its simplest terms, a matte cap is basically just an image that defines the lighting, shading, texture, everything for your object. It's great for simple materials or materials that you're not going to scrutinize too heavily, especially when you need to optimize. So for example, because the VTubing software I have does not allow for certain types of materials, I'm faking a lot of metallic and plastic and cloth textures right now on this avatar using matte caps. So a great way to understand how exactly matte caps work is to look at Blender. So you'll notice that I've got a couple of different objects in my scene right now. I've got a version of my avatar, a version of another avatar I've created, and then some basic uh, shapes. Since matte caps are commonly used for sculpting and understanding objects in 3D, there's a lot of them built into Blender by default, so you can view how your object might look if you applied a matte cap. So if I make sure I have viewport shading, which is what this little uh, solid circle is right here selected, and I go into this dropdown, I can access a list of built-in matte caps in Blender. And if I select one, for example, you'll notice that all of the objects in my scene change appearance. So all of these objects have lots of tiny faces all over them facing different directions, right? So basically this image, its shadows, highlights, whatever, are being applied to our objects based on how we're looking at them. So you'll notice if I look at the sphere, right? It looks exactly like our matte cap, no matter how we look at it from, because it's applying the texture of the matte cap based on the camera position, so based on how we're looking at it. So basically this is really cool because it lets us kind of cheat looking like all sorts of different materials with a singular image. Obviously it's not perfect in all situations because as you can see the reflections painted into this matte cap don't really match the reflections or the lighting of the environment. But if you need a quick material that you're not going to really zoom in on and look at, then it's a perfect option. So ultimately, you could paint your own matte caps, you can make whatever you need, you can turn an image into a matte cap, there are lots of possibilities. But for today's purposes, as well as for beginners, I would recommend this GitHub repository. So I have this uh, site linked in the description of the video, but basically what it is, is it's tons of different material captures for your use. Uh, keep in mind, different material captures may vary whether you can use them for personal use or commercially. So make sure that you're using the images appropriately. However, it's awesome because not only does it explain how matte caps work, but there are hundreds of different options of ones that you can download for free. So I'm going to be downloading some of the matte caps from this site for today, and I'm going to show you how to apply them to different shaders inside of Unity. So here we are in Unity with a couple of popular shaders up just to show you how you would apply a matte cap to each of them. Keep in mind, you can apply matte caps to a large variety of shaders. I've just picked a couple of popular ones for simplicity's sake. So as an example, let's apply a matte cap to Poyomi's Tune Shader. If I select my material with the shader activated, all I have to do is go under the Shading tab. There you will see different options for matte cap that you can check. The reason there's an option to have more than one matte cap within one shader is so you can section off different parts of your model to look different while still being contained within that one shader. This is a great way to optimize your models and reduce the amount of shaders and materials that you have. But for today, I'm just going to open up MatCap0, drag whichever MatCap I want into the slot, and that's it. So now you can see it's applied to our object, and it looks different depending on the angle that we're looking at it. For a more clear example, let's drag this material onto this model to see what it looks like. And as you can see, this is a highly efficient way to mimic materials quickly. Regarding mochi shaders, not all of their shaders have a matte cap option. So in order to use a matte cap within mochi shader, all you have to do is drag the matte cap image into the matte cap slot, which can be found under shading. You'll notice there's a difference between Poyomi shader and mochi shader. In Poyomi shader, the matte cap both controls the color and the lighting. However, in mochi shader, it just controls the lighting and shading of the object. 
This is extremely useful because it allows you to mix and match texture and shading effects. So for example, I could have it look like it has stripes, but also be shiny or rough at the same time. That's because it's treating our matte cap as an additive overlay to any other texture. If you're planning on putting your material on a quest avatar, you still have the option to use matte caps. When you start a project with the VRChat Creator Companion or you import the VRChat SDK, VRChat will offer you built-in shaders. This shader is called VRChat Mobile Matte Cap Lit. Just like our other shaders, we have the option to drag in a matte cap. That despite the fact that one of these shaders is for PC and the other is for Quest, they look nearly identical. This is another strong point of matte caps as they look basically the same across all platforms. The last shader that I'm going to go over today is Mtune. Mtune isn't commonly used inside of VRChat, however, it is used in most VTubing applications. If you want to achieve a shiny or metallic effect in Mtune, matte caps are one of the few ways to do it. In order to apply a matte cap to Mtune, we need to change the edit mode from basic to advanced. Now, if you scroll down, you have an option to apply a matte cap for the rim lighting of your object. The change wasn't very obvious on our cube, mostly because it's an object with pretty flat faces. However, look at the difference between these two objects. The model on the right is using a matte cap where the model on the left is not. Because these objects have a lot more curvature, it's much more obvious which one is using a matte cap and which one is not. Mtune is very similar to Mochi Shader in that you can change the underlying texture and also use a matte cap at the same time. Just like Mochi Shader, I can keep the shiny effect from the matte cap while changing the underlying base color. All of the shaders as well as the source for matte caps that I use in this video will be linked in the description. If you liked the base model that I used for demonstration in this video, you can actually find it for sale on my booth. The avatar base is optimized, fully set up for VRChat, and it has all sorts of different blend shapes where you can change the body size, type, fingernail length, all sorts of fun expressions and other ways to express yourself. It's 1,000 yen, which is about 7 US dollars at this time, and making purchases at my store is a great way to support me while also rewarding yourself with something special. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my tutorial about matte caps or material captures.